So I'm not sure about where you live, but here in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I'm based out of, when you ride through the city, you can see just as fast as they can build them, apartment complex is going up all over the place. And I think most people know it, especially investors know that the writing is on the wall. America is about to become a nation of renters compared to just a generation ago where it was a nation of owners. So for many years, I knew this trend was actually on the horizon just for so many market situations and where things are headed. But in my opinion, tiny houses are an excellent way to beat that, to beat that trend. For most people, owning an actual home is becoming more and more and more of a pipe dream. It's no longer the American dream, it's a pipe dream. That's because the price of homes have gone up so much, although wages and salaries have not gone up at all. So really quickly, I'm gonna break down how living in a tiny house can actually save you a ton of money. But before I do that, I wanna say that I have seen so many people on social media over the years, people saying tiny houses are becoming too expensive. What's the point? I can't even save money by living in tiny houses. I'm going to break down really quickly for you how that is absolutely not the case. So I did a lot of research for this video, preparing for it, because I want to get you the latest data as of May 2024. Okay, as of April 2024, the average house sold in the United States, now I know it varies a lot, uh, but the average price was $433,000. Now I know a lot of you are going to say, whoa, that is a lot based on where I live. And some of you might say, I wish houses were that cheap where I live. Maybe you're in California or Florida or wherever, but that is the average price sold. I know it fluctuates a lot, but we're going to go based on that. And that means roughly about $2,400 per month. Of course, that varies based on your amount you put down and it also varies on your income and your credit score and things like that. But that is the average price per month. Now, since there's really nowhere in the world where data is being kept on tiny houses sold other than right here at tiny house listings, we're the only source that's true for that. Uh, I can tell you that as of April 2024, within the last year, the average price of a tiny house sold on our platform is $61,500. Now, if you look at the price of a regular house sold, the average price versus the average price of a tiny house, that means a tiny house represents only about 14% of the average price of regular homes sold. And there's really no other data out there anywhere else other than here at Tiny House Listings that tells you roughly how much that equals out to be per month if you do a long-term loan for financing on your tiny house. But we can tell you on average, based on what we've seen, that's about $800 per month. So that's a quick breakdown of the ticket price of a regular home and a tiny house. So in the second category, I wanna break down the average cost when you're living in a tiny house versus a traditional home of the ongoing expenses. So according to NerdWallet, which is a very popular website, it says that the average amount that people pay in the United States for their insurance annually is about $2,100. Now us owning tiny house communities and seeing all the data out there and what people are tending to pay for their insurance for their tiny house, it equals out to be about $40 per month, which is about $500 per year. Now, of course, if you own your tiny house outright, you can go without paying insurance. That's completely up to you. But most people do not own their actual house and they have to carry insurance on the house. So yeah, about $2,100 per year for regular homes for insurance and about $500 per year for a tiny house. The single biggest expense based on my research that is ongoing for a house is the maintenance. In my research, I found out that this fluctuates a lot. It goes from 3,000 to 12,000. Of course, that is an average. And this is according to Redfin, a very another popular, credible website. So in this video, we're gonna go somewhere in the middle, about $7,500 per year for maintenance on a home. So if you do the math, that equals out to about $625 a month for maintaining a regular home. Based on the research we've done and all the statistics we have in-house, the average maintenance for a tiny house equals out to be about $1,000 per year. This is another big one. I was really surprised when I did the research. And again, we found this out through Redfin that the average taxes that people pay in the United States is $4,000 per year. Now here in North Carolina, it tends to be a little bit less unless you're near the coast. Now, if you live in a tiny house, it can vary how much you, taxes you pay. In some states, you pay zero for your uh, tiny house because tiny houses are considered personal property. Some states we found it goes all the way up to 2% per year. Either way, the taxes in a tiny house are much less. But based on our data, it's about $50 per month for taxes. Now, one of the biggest differences between buying a tiny house and buying a traditional house, traditional houses almost always, 100% of the time roughly, come with the land that they sit on. So when you look at the sticker price, you have to realize that is dirt. The dirt beneath it comes with that sticker price. Now that's not always the case with a tiny house. What we're starting to see is more and more people moving their tiny houses into communities. And the thing is great about that, we own tiny house communities, is that all the legwork is done for you. You literally move in with your tiny house and you just pay a monthly lot rent. The great thing about this is you're not committing to that particular piece of land. 
For example, the leases that we do in our tiny house communities are just one year. So if you move there, you're not sure you like it, and one year you can move your tiny house, which is the initial concept behind living in a tiny house in the first place. If you buy a regular home and that piece of dirt underneath it, you're committing. You're committing for 30 years unless if you want to get out of the loan. So if you don't like the area, you're basically stuck until you figure out a way to sell the house. Having said that, based on our research, the average lot rent for a tiny house is about $600 per month. Now in many communities, that also includes utilities. For example, our community in Floyd, Virginia, it's called Mountain Tiny Haven. We include everything for $550 per month and you pay a $75 a month for electricity. But that also included is the internet, the water, the sewer, the dumpster fees and all that. But again, based on our research through Redfin, the average electricity spent per house in the United States is $130 per month. Based on the research we found and we've looked at, a tiny house's electricity is roughly about half that. All right, so I've thrown a bunch of numbers at you, a bunch of stats. What does that mean? What does that actually look like? What's the difference between living in a regular home and a tiny house in terms of the overall scope of uh, financially? If you look at a regular home, average price for your monthly rent is $2,400. The insurance is roughly about $175 per month. Maintenance, $625 per month. Tax is about $330 per month. Utility is about $200 per month. That's including water and others. So that comes out to about $3,660 per month. So now let's look at the monthly cost financially while living in a tiny house. On average, assuming you don't pay cash for your tiny house, which I wanna make a quick point, most people living in a tiny house sold their regular home just to move into a tiny house and a lot of times have cash. But if you're financing your tiny house, it's gonna be about roughly $800 per month. The lot rent, roughly about $600 per month. Your insurance is gonna be about $40 per month. Taxes, about $50 a month. Like I said before, it could be zero. It depends on where you live. And your utilities, roughly about $100 per month. So what does that equal out to? That's about $1,590 per month to live in a tiny house with all costs associated with that. Now, one of the things I wanna point out, if you remember at the beginning of this video, I informed you that the average price of a tiny house represents only about 14% of that of a regular home. So you will for sure pay off your tiny house much, much quicker. Now, if you look at the interest on a $400,000 home, $433,000, you can basically double that given the current interest rates today and if you do it over 30 years. So you're looking at over $800,000. It's gonna be a fraction of that if you live in a tiny house. So we didn't even get into the interest and all that. There's even more money to be saved. But let's assume you owe money still on your tiny house and you have all the costs associated with it. Same thing true of the regular house. You're only paying about 40% monthly by living in a tiny house versus a traditional home. Okay, so if you want to live in a tiny house, if this video convinced you that maybe tiny house living is for you, email us at build at tinyhouselistings.com or you can go to our build website, which is where we actually build tiny homes and sell them. You can go to tinyhouselistings.build. So let us know in the comments below. Do you believe that tiny house living is for you and that you could save a lot of money? Let us know. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.